In the chapter six, we touched on the basis of uh, basics of forecasting. Uh, next several sessions, we are going to investigate several methods of forecasting. In this chapter, we will cover time series forecasting. This chapter is not the part of book we use, and if you have any problems at all with this topic, please be sure to reach out to me so we can discuss it. First, we need to understand what the time series data means. Time series data is a sequence of data points that we collect at regular intervals. For example, we collect daily repair or weekly occupancy and such. This kind of data is used in almost every aspect of our life, right? For example, monthly, quarterly, or yearly economic macro-level data or financial data. In our industry, specifically in the hotel industry, RevPAR, occupancy, ADR, etc. are used. Uh, but we can also use like customer ratings of our property, right? Or guest satisfaction surveys to measure changes over time. This information could be used to identify trends, uh, what happened in the past, happening now, and what uh, future might bring. In the end, all those things we do because we can use it to make informed decisions. Now, there are many different methods, and we are not able to cover all of them, of course. Uh, for the sake of this chapter, we will focus on several methods. Uh, why we use these methods? Uh, because it's quick and easy, uh, maybe except the last one a little bit. Old winters could be a little bit complicated. Uh, we often use them because we don't want to invest too much in the forecasting model. Uh, they are mostly used for short-term forecasting. We need to understand that uh, we use some basic math, but these are not full-pledged statistical methods, right? So, and based on simple intuitive principles. Also, let's not forget, in any kind of statistical methods, if you recall from your uh, statistics courses, we have to follow certain assumptions. For these basic methods, we assume no significant changes during the forecasted period. A pattern exists in the data and can be identified, except maybe in the uh, seasonality and trends, we will talk briefly later. And the smoothing method can distinguish between the patterns and the noise in the data. So what do we do? We calculate expected forecasted data based on historical data. Now, we are going to start with naive methods in forecasting. The naive method refers to a simple approach that makes prediction based solely on the most recent observation or data point. It's like this. Now, let's go to focus on our Excel. Okay, first, actually, let's start with adding some shapes here. Okay, this is a raw data we use, by the way. Just some, uh, I don't remember what was this data for, probably occupancy data from somewhere. But I just put the periods and some random data, okay? So when we look at the naive data, now let's do the actually same thing here. Let's create a chart so can you see visually as well. Okay, now what did we say? That naive data is basically you are using, what is using? The data before. Okay, so it's very simple, very basic, right? So, oops, the one we are uh, doing in the, for the second period, so it's going to automatically get the last before. Okay, now let's go back to... Our PowerPoint. Some key aspects of the naive uh, forecasting method. It assumes no seasonality or trends exist and the data is random. The next value is best predicted by the last observed value. For example, if forecasting monthly sales, 
the naive forecast for the next month will be equal to the sales of the current month, right? So for time series with seasonality, a seasonal naive model can be used, but we are not going to uh, focus on this here. It predicts the next, va next value to be same as the previous season value for the time period. More specifically, I want you to consider this. Consider a hotel. There are seven days in a week, and there could be a huge demand, demand difference, say, Thursday and Friday. So if you want to use naive forecasting this Friday, instead of the day before on Thursday, we should use the last Friday. So basically, you are using the last similar uh, event. Like, for example, on Thursday, Friday, for the Friday, we're going to use the last Friday because we know the demand is going to be different between uh, uh, Thursday and Friday. But we know that this week's Friday could be similar to last day, uh, last Friday. So the naive method serves as a benchmark to compare other simple forecasting techniques against. <clears throat> More sophisticated methods should outperform it in, in order to use it. It often provides reasonable short-term forecasts for stable uh, data series, but it usually cannot capture trends or long-term patterns, I mean, as expected. So it performs poorly for series with clear seasonal and trend components. The forecast will lag behind turning points as well if there is a sudden changes. The naive method is easy to implement, but has no analytical rationale or error correction mechanism. So in summary, the naive forecasting approach simply uses the last uh, observation as the prediction for the next period. It is very simple but does not account for any patterns in the data. It serves as a baseline for comparing more complex forecasting. The moving average, the next method, is a simple forecasting technique that calculates the average of fixed number of past observation and uses that to forecast future values. Some uh, key aspects of the moving average method, it takes average of window of the n most recent observation in the time series. Like, what is n? Like, how many uh, uh, periods is going to use? For example, a two-period uh, two moving average uses the average of the most recent two values. This is actually 50-50 weighted moving average, but we will talk uh, about that in a second. Similarly, if you are using three-period moving average, then you add actual values in time t, t minus 1, and t minus 2 divided by 3. So if we turn this better mathematical notation, uh, we can use this for the all kind of ends, right? For example, for three period moving average and we want to forecast month four using those values, we add months one, two, and three, right? And divide the three. So we got the, our values now. One month passed. Okay, and new data available. So we roll the data. Now, get months two, three, and four. Okay, for the forecasted month five. This is why we call it moving or rolling averages. I mean, the oldest one is gone, newest one is added. Also, as you can see, we forecasted 700 for month four before but actual was 1185, so it wasn't exactly a good forecast. Let us go to Excel and uh, do some examples in, in, in Excel. Okay, uh, what I want you to do is please just try to do this on your own, calculate them, and come back to video. Now, I'm assuming you already did some calculations, and hopefully we're going to uh, have the same values. Now, Actually, let, let me copy also a uh, formula so you can see it here. And also, similarly, what we did before, let's create a graph chart so you can see what does it look like. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we did say in the moving average uh, uh, three period, you need to ignore one, two, three period, and the fourth period, you get the average of previous three periods. Okay, and if you double click on this, it's gonna basically calculate all of them, or you can just basically pull down. It's the same thing, but 
always be sure to check that things works correctly. Like for example, uh, for this, we got the three previous period. If we move one down, it's also gonna eliminate the oldest one and it also adds the newest one. And as you can see, that's what does it look like in our graph. Now let's do the same thing for the moving average of five period. Uh, I don't know why this thing's moved. Let's put it back. Okay. Now, similarly, let's get this and let's get what the chart is going to look like. Okay. Now, we are doing five periods right now, right? So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start from here. But before we start the similar to moving average three period, please try to do it yourself. And when you are done, come back. So I'm assuming uh, you uh, start the video and you did the calculations already. Let's do the similar things. We get the one, two, three, four, five periods. Right? And also we calculated the same thing. Let's ignore the error for now. And we are checking again. Uh, for the period six, we got in one through five. For period seven, we should get to two to six. Basically eliminate the oldest one and newest one. So this is the moving average calculations, okay? Now let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint. Now, uh, as new observations become available, the window of three period data selected slides forward and all those values drop from the calculation as we talked, right? So the moving average helps smooth out short-term fluctuations and highlight longer-term trends and uh, cycles. The choice of window of length N depends on the data frequency and the desired smoothing effect. Longer windows provide more smoothing, but are less responsive. For time series with seasonality, there are seasonal moving averages as well that filters out seasonal components. Advantages are simplicity, intuitive appeal, and familiarity. So it also requires small amount of data. Disadvantages are time lag, full response to turning points if there is a sudden changes and potential smoothing away of useful, useful uh, uh, short-term signals. Now, the moving average forecast is the average of the last n observations. It is one of the simplest techniques for forecasting time series data. Variations like weighted and exponential moving averages modify calculations that account for more recent data. We will talk about it soon. So, Use larger n when a lot of randomness in the past data. Pattern is relatively stable. Use smaller n, little randomness, and fast response to changes in the pattern. Some of you might be wondering, by the way, which methods we are talking are better. But we are going to talk more about the evaluation of these methods in the uh, evaluation of these methods in the next video. Now let's talk about the weighted moving average. Uh, weighted moving average, or WMA, is a forecasting technique that assigns more weight to recent data points than the older data points. This means that uh, weighted moving average will be more responsive to the changes in data than simple moving average, which we discussed. And the uh, weighted moving average is calculated by multiplying each data point in the series by predetermined weighting factor, then summing the resulting values. The weighting factors are typically arranged in a decreasing order. So that usually, it's a, that, that, that's the way it is. So that the most recent data points are giving the most weight. So first, you have to understand a couple of things, right? First, total weight must be equal to one. For example, at forecasting at time t plus 1 equal to actual data at time t multiplied by assigned weight for time t plus actual time at t minus 1. Multiplied with assigned weight for t minus 1. Add it together. Similarly, if there are three or more periods, 
once again, weight total needs to be equal to 1. And each period multiplied by the assigned weights and added together. Let us uh, go and give an example in, in Excel. I guess it's going to make it easier. Okay, where is my Excel? Here. <coughs> Now, uh, actually, let's let's copy again the formulas here, so you can see what does it look like. Okay, and also similar to what we did. Let's let's do this. Let's add a graph, the chart, so you can see it easier. Okay. Now, um, let's give us some random numbers. Okay, point seven. Or if you want to be sure that when the numbers change, that this thing is not going to move around. So you can basically put it one minus whatever the value here. So if you, if you change one of them, the other one is automatically going to change. It's very simple, right? So for the weighted moving average two, we're going to start, of course, from the uh, uh, period three. Okay. Now, there are couple things uh, I want you to understand. What did we say? Now, this is time of t, right? We are here right now. This is time of minus 1, and we are starting the forecast from here. Okay? So if you come here, we put the equal sign. So what's the formula says? At... Uh, uh, at the time t, we need to use at weight t. So this is the time t, right? So we say this multiply by this one. One thing I want you to be sure, so it's not going to move. You when you because the if we copy paste all this to all the line, it's going to move everything, right? So we don't want you to do that. So we're going to fix that with hitting the F4, which is basically all the numbers going to be multiplied with uh, uh, WT uh, value over there, okay? Plus, what else we have? We have T minus 1 value. Multiply with what? T minus value. Uh, wait, once again, we hit the F4. So, if we pull this all the way, it's going to automatically calculate everything, okay? Now, just to randomly, let's check, for example, this one, okay? If you look at here, blue, this one, multiply with red here, purple, multiply with the green, and it gives us our values, okay? Now, let's go back to our PowerPoints again. Uh, <clears throat> weighted averages help avoid distortions from old data and provide greater responsiveness to recent changes. However, they may overemphasize recent outliers or volatility compared to simple averages. The choice of weighting factors is subjective. There are no set rules. Uh, I mean, how do you decide 0 0.7 and 0 0.2, right? So in terms of implementation, the weighted average is calculated similarly to simple moving average, but each data point's value is multiplied by this assigned weight. So weighted moving averages are a little bit more complex, but can provide smoother, more responsive forecast than the simple averages in many situations. They are best suited to data with potential sudden shifts or changes in the underlying patterns. The next one is the exponential smoothing. Uh, this is a um, forecasting technique that places more weight on recent observations and less weight on older observations at time series. The weighting decreases exponentially as, as observations get older. We can choose the alpha between 0 and 1. Forecast at time t plus 1 becomes alpha times actual value at time t and 1 minus alpha times the forecasted value at time t. This forecasted value could come from different ways. For example, if demand and forecast giving for month 
month one month one and as for the forecast month two we can calculate by assuming our uh, alpha is 0 0.3 right so we calculated 0 0.3 times 120 plus 1 minus 0 0.3 because 0 0.7 similar to weighted moving average uh, times 97 so that gives us uh, our value Uh, similarly, we calculate the next period. So we continue doing this basically continuously. Let us look uh, at uh, uh, um, some example from Excel again. Okay, where is my Excel here? Once again, let's move the our formula and rules here and also similarly with what we did before let's get some chart so we can see what does it look like okay now um, first I'm gonna explain these things uh, a little bit later but let's what's the first value right we usually get the first value there are different ways i'm going to explain but let's in this case get the first value is first value okay now when we calculate the second one what what the formula says oh by the way we need to choose alpha let's get some random alpha let's say 0 0.6 so how are we going to calculate this it's simple you says equal Alpha, once again, be sure to uh, hit the F4 at just that uh, uh, at dollar value, so it's going to be fixed, right? Times first time period, right? We are talking about, the, what are you talking about? At time T, okay? Plus, once again, 1 minus alpha value, once again f4 okay times so what did we forecast this one now let's look at quickly we got the alpha we got the actual value here one minus alpha we got here and forecasted first value is here if we do the same thing all the way you will see what does it look like okay okay now some key aspects uh, the forecast is the weighted average of the past observations with the weights decaying exponentially over time the most recent observation receives the highest weight while older observation receives exponentially decreasing weights. The weighting factor is specified by smoothing const constant alpha between 0 and 1. Higher values of alpha discount older observations faster. So higher the alpha, older observation considered less. I mean, like, we, we discount older observation much faster in a way. So the forecast equation is typically is giving. So where... Uh, future uh, T is the forecast for current period and uh, in, in this case here is uh, AT is the actual value observed, right? So alpha controls responsiveness to recent changes. Higher values cause the forecast to follow recent changes more closely. Now simple exponential smoothing performs well for data without trends or seasonal patterns. Variations like double or triple exponential smoothing can handle trends and seasonality, which we're going to talk about whole winters in a, a, a few minutes or maybe in another video. Uh, compared to moving averages, exponential smoothing provides greater weight to recent data and response to faster uh, changes. It requires selection of good smoothing constant alpha, which may require trial and error. Unlike moving average, we need two elements. 
One is the last observation and last forecast. Now, like moving average, exponential smoothing inaccurate when there is a sharp change. Like the choosing n with moving average, there is no clear rule as to the best exponential smoothing alpha. Now, you are wondering, of course, in exponential smoothing, what's the forecasted value? How are we going to determine that? Right? There are several ways. Like we were talking about the uh, first uh, uh, here, like you know, in the uh, first uh, uh, forecast value. Forced observation could be set the similar I did in Excel equal to first actual data point. That's acceptable. You you can use average. Use average of the initial observations if there are multiple actual observations, of course. You can use optimization. There are statistical optimization techniques. We are not going to get into that. You can use expert judgment. Apply domain knowledge to estimate the initial value. Basically, uh, you or people are expert in these things. They use many different methods. They say this is the best method. You use whatever the expert's judgment is. You can use hybrid methods. Combine the multiplication or combination of uh, the, the, the methods for more nuanced approach. The choice of the initial forecast affects early predictions but become less impactful as more actual data is incorporated. So that's the one of the reasons I use the uh, set uh, equal uh, the first actual data point because we were uh, forecasting like 43 periods. By the time what you choose in the first, it wasn't really not that, that important. So if you have a basically a lot of observations, you can use, uh, use the first observation as the first uh, uh, if, or for first forecasting uh, point as the first actual data point. So, the, of course, I know you are thinking what n and alpha value should we use, similar to weighted moving average or in this case in the alpha, right? So, one of course methods the trial and error. You use many different methods to see what best for your data. Let's not forget, uh, data is important because it depends on the hotel A versus hotel B might have different alpha values because the way it's been structured, where the people coming, where the demand and supply works. There are many factors. So trial and error works well. But of course, it's, it's, you know, it takes a lot of time. What else we can use? Excel solver. I will give an example in the next video, both for uh, weighted moving average and how to calculate the both uh, exponential smoothing and also next methods, uh, halters and instant methods.